Welcome home. It's Irish Family History with curious news and notes. Celebrating our fourth year of this podcast at the Irish Roots Cafe, where every day's a holiday and there's always room for one more. One of six broadcast series from the head school at irishroots.com. I'm Michael Laughlin, your host, publisher of rare Irish books and uh, information on every county in Ireland since 1978. Be sure to read our blog, complete with links to click on from this podcast, and search our master index and books for free. Molly, wet the tea, Katie, bar the door, Sweeney, clear that floor, and bring out the Irish dancers. It's time we get this show on the road. Well, it's show number 142, and among today's topics at the Irish Head School, number one, the Irish family name of the week is Kelleher. Number two, the rare name of the week is Mowbray. Number three, Wild Geese Heritage Museum in Ireland. Number four, 500,000 Irish come from which South American country? Number five, they've spotted a rare iceberg uh, off the coast of Ireland uh, just just the other day here. I wonder what county that was off of. We're going to find out. And uh, number six, early films in Ireland explained. And number seven, Cork, Ireland is the book of the month. And also, we're going to have a video on Cork, too. And uh, Shay, the genealogist, is going to help us out a little bit there. Now we're going to uh, move on to uh, notes from Mike. Well, here are some of the notes I got going. This is what's going on around the Irish Roots Cafe and what's happening with all the other podcasts and with the head school and our local presentations, just about everything. And we're getting ready to go online with the Irish head school and, uh, you can watch for some new hedgerow history and language shows to show up on those courses, and you'll be able to sign up for a course and just click on them whenever you want. It's sort of a new, our newest idea, and we'll always have free shows and podcasts up for you, that's for sure. But this is a way to continue on and have even more shows and more activity here. And, uh, hey, here's a note on a rare family name, Mowbray. Now, in an email I got from the Republic of Panama... Uh, Carol Mowbray Bruner said that John W. Mowbray came from Donegal around 1870. So I want you to remember that because if you're looking for that name, it's a rare run, and I thought I'd mention it on this podcast. And number three, Pat Walkenhorst reminds me that the price of Irish settlers of Kansas is $18.95, and the Callahans of Kansas is $35. These are two fine books to help researchers, and uh, I think if you put a little search on the web in there, you'll be able to find both of them pretty quick. And we're really excited to get these things going on the on the new podcast that I mentioned. And uh, gosh, I would think within the next 30 days, you should see it coming up on the web page. And uh, we're really excited. I hope you are too, and we welcome any of your comments. Uh, that's a fact. And next we got coming up, the One Minute Podcast. Well, today's podcast excerpt is from the Irish Song and Recitation Festival with a little Tura Lura Lou. Uh, let's listen in. Irish Song and Recitation Festival, home of song, story, and poetical proverb. You know, I think I'd like to hear you sing. I'll jump the gun here a little bit. We'll talk. Ah. We'll chat in a second. But I think you'd I'd like to hear that that song that premiered in Chauncey Olcott's production of Shamin Du, which was Black Haired Jimmy. Uh, I, that would be a great song for you to sing today. Black Haired Jimmy. Yes. But, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the, the well, that was the name of the production. Oh, I got of the you. show. Yeah, got and now the song later came on, and it was a big hit. Uh, Bing Crosby, 
he just did a grand job on it. People will never forget it. Oh, he did. And boop, he sang boop, boop, it boop, in uh, boop. Going My Way. Oh, yes. 1944. Oh, and I loved they sang that. Father had it on his whiskey bottle music box. Oh, my And he opened gosh. it. He says, would you like a little bit of the yeah. crater? Would you have a wee bit? <laughs> yeah, we'll have a little bit of the crater. And they'd have one little shot and then put it away again. Yeah. I don't know what part of Ireland they came from. but <laughs> <laughs> And then the, at the end of the mad movie, you know, he, they bring his mother over from Ireland because he couldn't oh, go. Oh, that's right. And they sang Tooraloo Raloo. That, yeah. Uh, that Tooraloo. Was, Could you uh, sing Tooraloo for me? Oh, and Barry yeah. Fitzgerald got that look on his face, yeah. that heavenly look. Oh, yeah. Uh, over in Killarney many years ago my mother sang a song to me in tones so sweet and low just a simple little ditty in her dear old Irish way and I'd give a world if I could hear that song again today well, that's it for the excerpt from the Irish Song and Recitation podcast. Be sure to tune into this episode's and all the new ones too. Hey, now it's time for the books, or I guess what you might say, the books of the month. And uh, since we're talking about a name that. Uh, you're going to find a lot in County Cork in some records, and that's where our members searching for it. We picked the Families of County Cork, Ireland, which is our hardbound volume on the Families of County Cork. And there's over a thousand family histories in there. It's everything I could dig up, ancient and modern, and, and fit inside those pages. And uh, it's part of our uh, uh, 34 book set on Irish family history in Ireland, and that's the Families of County Cork, Ireland. Now, the second book is also from our Irish Families Project. It's County Cork, Ireland, Genealogy and Family History Notes. That's a spiral-bound book, and it's smaller than the first book I mentioned. And it's really to acquaint you with the records and the research just within that county in County Cork. It's not jam-packed with uh, family histories, uh, but it's to help you uh, trace back no matter what you are. It's sort of a primer for uh, County Cork research as I see it. Hey, and I've also got in my collection a uh, several years' worth of that old uh, uh, magazine that was put out, the Journal of the Cork Genealogical and Archaeological Society Journal, uh, or a name very similar to that. And it's got a bit of everything in there. It'll have a little bit on legends. It might have a little bit on a small little townland or ruins or castles and who inhabited the castles and uh, sometimes on, on interesting people and sometimes on the uh, history of the area, and sometimes it even goes outside of County Cork into other areas. But uh, if you have an inquiring mind, uh, that's really one nice old uh, uh, journal you can pick up on. I know you can buy them used every now and then, and uh, you know what? Somebody's probably put those on uh, tape or disc, or uh, they've started to, so you can always do a search on the web, but I re recommend that resource. This is, it's one of the better journals I've seen, and it goes back quite a way. So uh, you can sure have a lot of fun with it. Uh, uh, so take a look at that if you get a chance. And remember, they have journals like that for almost all of the counties in Ireland. So uh, I know uh, County Clare, there's several scholarly journals. And not only are the articles interesting, but if you're searching for your family or an historical topic, if you look back under the sources after an article is written, the author will put the sources behind it, and it might have a source there that is a source just about your family name or just about your family town, and that's a place you want to be looking if you're doing some down-and-dirty, outright, hardcore research. So remember that. Check the sources when you read an article. <laughs> Well, now it's time to uh, raise our eyes and ask for help. It's today's Magnificent Seven, and these are seven fo folks who have given us support over this past week or so. And uh, gosh, here they are. But before, oh, before I say that, you know, we got a story coming up in a few minutes. 
And, uh, you know, it's been 40 years, but now a rare iceberg has just been sighted off the Irish coast. And uh, isn't that something now? It makes you think. And remember, we've got this podcast, which is what I uh, uh, broadcast live. And we have a blog which is that contains the uh, show notes from this podcast. And then we have a blog reader where you can press that little button on the blog on my webpage and it'll actually have the computer read the uh, written show notes. So it's just three different ways you can get the show. And now are today's Magnificent Seven. Gary Veno of Spokane, Washington, your county cabin genealogy book has shipped. Patrick Kinney of Franklin, New Hampshire, welcome as a new member. Welcome Richard McMahon of Coatesville, Pennsylvania. You're Claire Cork, Limerick, Dublin, and one other book has shipped. You're the customer of the week. Number four, Kathleen O'Malley of Wixom, Michigan. Welcome as a new member. And she's looking for info on her grandparents, John O'Malley and Mary Malone. And number five, Mary DeSandro of Philadelphia, PA. Your Mac and O names book has shipped. And number six, James O'Laughlin of O'Fallon, Missouri. Welcome as a new member. And welcome K. Marie Maddock of Ecusia or Ecuca, Australia. Welcome as a new member. We're always good to see those folks come in from Australia and uh, Canada and uh, the UK. Uh, you're welcome here all the time. Hey, that reminds me, I'd like to say thank you to all of our members and all of you who've signed up in the last couple of weeks to start off the new year right, because without you, we wouldn't be able to have all these podcasts, and I'm really trying hard to keep them all going and uh, to go back to some of these other series I haven't been able to get to in a year to update them. So uh, your memberships make it possible, and I do appreciate it, and we welcome anything you can do to help. Now it's time for the Irish Family Name of the Day. And that name is going to be Kelleher. Now, today's family name is in honor of Marjorie A. Waller. And she's searching for Kelleher in County Cork, which is just one of the areas you might find the name. And you can spell it several different ways. It usually starts with a K or an O-K, as in O. Kelleher. Uh, sometimes it's even shortened. We're going to hear about that in a second. And it's a part of variant spelling group number 2447. And that's from the guide to the various spellings of Irish family names. I've got a link on the blog. Let's take a look at that name. The O'Kellahers were originally of County Clare, and those old books like the Four Masters might spell that name with a C instead of a K sometimes. And family members can trace the line back to a nephew of the last great high king, Brian Baru at times. And the family name is still found in County Clare, which was, of course, Brian Baru's stronghold. But the majority of the family name are found in uh, counties Cork and Kerry by the end of the last century. So maybe they got pushed around for supporting uh, Brian Baru. Or maybe they got pushed out because they opposed Brian Baru. I wonder what the story is on that. But in fact, you know, the majority of the name are, are found transplanted uh, to County Cork in the 14th century. Or at least that was the plan. Maybe they're working their way back up to Clare, hitting Kerry, and they're just moving up there slowly to their roots. Now, you might find some confusion because the name of Keller, a K-E-L-L-E-R, is also a variant spelling of Kelleher. It's sort of a phonetic shortening of it. And, of course, Keller is more likely originally a German surname. But if you find it in Ireland, it could be Kelleher in hiding. Now, there was a younger branch of the family... Uh, represented by Alderman Keller of County Cork during John O'Hart's time. He's that famous historian and genealogist that put out several books, and he talked about Alderman Keller being a representative of the uh, Kelleher family, too. So that's another confirmation. And uh, most of this came from the Book of Irish Families, Great and Small, uh, the, the lead volume to our uh, Irish Families project, that set of 34 uh, uh, volumes of books, and uh, we took a look in the Irish Family uh, Coats of Arms book, the Irish Book of Arms. Not there. That didn't mean they weren't worthy, and that didn't mean they weren't an Irish noble family. It just means the uh, Crown, the authorities in England, didn't issue them a coat of arms way back when. Uh, hey, who knows what else is going on over there? But we've also got to take a look at some uh, sources now for the name uh, 
of Kelleher under many different spellings. Let's take a look at that right now. Hey, we're also going to talk in a few minutes about uh, flying the Irish flag in South America in a specific uh, country. And let's take a look at that free master index at irishroots.com. And I'm typing in the Kelleher name. And let's just take seven examples. There is a, there's a bunch of them there. But there's uh, Kelleher and Irish families on the Count California Trail. There's a Major Timothy Kelleher in the Journal of the American Irish Historical Society. There's also... Uh, Kelleher's in uh, our Cork, Kerry, and Clare books. That's families of Cork, families of Kerry, and families of Clare. So uh, there's plenty of people to find there. And Kelleher is, of course, a well-known spelling, and you find it in the Birth Index of Ireland. That helps That helps locate most of the family name in the, the 19th century. And then if you go to the older works like uh, Irish Names and Surnames by the Reverend Patrick Wolfe, He's got O. Keller in there. He he kept the O on the name because he knew the history. And uh, a lot of people today forget that there was an O on so many of these Irish names and it was dropped or added at will. Uh, but that just gives you an example of how much uh, you can find on the Kelleher name. And then you've got to narrow it down to just your family. But it's nice to know there's plenty of information out there on the name. Oh, and now it's time for Around the World in Irish Ways, the web page and video of the month. Hey, number one on our uh, uh, blog we've got there, there's a video we picked as the video of the month, and it's a meeting with uh, O'Shea, who is a genealogist in County Cork, Ireland, and they also point out some tourist sites, but uh, that might be an interesting thing to look at, not just for genealogy, but also for tourism. Uh, number two, the Wild Geese Heritage Museum and Library in County Galway. I've got that web page on the blog. And, of course, the Wild Geese are all those fighting Irishmen that had to get shipped overseas or, uh, or face the gallows or worse, I think, if they stayed behind in Ireland. And one day those Wild Geese shall return. Or so the story went. And number three, the story of early film in Ireland. I know they've got that film festival in uh, Boston I've seen at least a couple of years now. But that gives you some info on some of that early film in Ireland and what's been discovered, uh, just to, to give you a start. And number four, the Ulster Heritage Magazine. Uh, they talk about Ulster DNA. And, of course, Ulster is Northern Ireland and all those counties up there to the north. So if they say your name's in Ulster, uh, that means it's the north of the I Ireland and the Ulster Heritage Magazine has interesting articles every now and then for genealogists. So I've got a link on uh, my blog to that one. And since it talks about DNA, I know you folks are going to be uh, interested. And boy, we all know there's some mighty strong DNA up there in Ulster, especially through the O'Neill clan. Uh, you can also see our video shorts by clicking on uh, the link on our blog, too. So you can take a look at that. And that's another thing I have to do more of, video shorts, now that I learned how to do them. Well, now we're going to go to uh, Curious News and Notes. Ah, it's everybody's favorite Curious News and Notes from Ireland and who knows where else. But you talk about global cooling. It's been 40 years since they've seen an iceberg. But it's just been spotted off uh, County Donegal, Ireland, near the Aaron Moore Lighthouse. So uh, I think that the debate is still active, and I don't know what to think. Number two, fly the Irish flag in Argentina, because as many as 500,000 claim Irish heritage there, and that's nearly 3% of the total population. I've got a link to that story on the blog. Um, number three, uh, Records Ireland. Now, there's a web page. They'll get your citizenship, birth, death, and marriage certificates for you. I know a lot of people are looking for that. Uh, number four, the Directory of Online Naturalization Records. Uh, now, and some of those are new. They've just been added. I got that off of uh, Twitter, I think. So you might want to check that web page out. Link on the blog. Number five, the 1641 depositions from Ireland. That's the year 1641. They're going online. There's over 3,000 of them in all. 
And uh, they include eyewitness statements that describes the violence and the murder from this era in Ireland. And, of course, that's when there was really, there was an Irish Civil War and a lot of the Irish sided with the, the King of England against the Irish Parliament because he was treating them better than the Irish Parliament were. And uh, some of the old English settlers sided with the Irish to fight against the Irish Parliament, who were the new English settlers. It's really, it's really a mess. And then just shortly thereafter, here comes Cromwell, and that was mass destruction and death. And then, of course, you've got the Treaty of Limerick and uh, the Jacobites and the Williamites and uh, all of that history, which is very, very interested. And a man, matter of fact, we've covered all that in our uh, uh, Irish Hedgerow History podcast. We did quite a bit on the 17th century. I don't know if I've released that yet, but uh, you ought to listen to it if you have an interest in Irish history. Uh, so much history and even even books and publications go back to that century in Ireland. It might surprise you, but that is really a seminal time for sure. Now, I've got a link on the blog to uh, that little note. And number six, uh, there's almost 240,000 tombstone photos that were gathered within South Australia and that's one of the uh, largest co collections ever gathered by one person. And I've got a link on the blog that's at gravesecrets.net. And boy, that fellow must have clicked a lot of film. I hope he's digital. That way he could have taken 240,000 tombstone uh, photos and uh, helped out. So if you're in Australia or South Australia, that is, there's a good place to go. And I think he's looking for even more uh, tombstones uh, uh, that he might be able to put on that website. So if you've got one or two shots, you can contact him and send it over there to him. And thanks a lot, Australia. And hey, thanks a lot, Gold uh, Ghoul Genealogy in Australia. They're still handling our books. So remember, if you're in Australia or close by there, check with Ghoul Genealogy. Uh, that's going to be it for today. That's all for today, folks. Joseph, warm up those pipes. Remember, we have a broadcast series on Irish song and recitation, on local history of the Irish in America, and on 2,000 years of Irish history, as well as on the counties, and something special coming up on Irish language, I hope. Uh, we've got all that and more at our head school at irishroots.com. And you know, we've been known to appear, exhibit, teach, and even sing for your special events. Be sure to book in advance if it's important. And write me at my American address at Irish Roots Cafe, Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri, 64116. Leave a message by phone at 816-256-3360. Reach me on my webpage at irishroots.com. Skype me at the Irish Roots Cafe. Uh, get me on MySpace, Facebook, Twitter, and Irish Central. Members foot the bill so they get first priority, but we're open to all. And by the way, a big thank you to all of our members. And away. <laughs>